We're gonna do a tier list. Oh my god, a tier list. All right, so we've finished Fate Samurai. Yay! I no longer have to play that sh We're gonna rate them. We're gonna do a tier list. Uh, do we have everything? No X rank. What is this? We don't have X rank. We have EX rank. Cuckoo Lane. Cuckoo Lane. What do I think about Cuckoo Lane? He fought us. He then was mind controlled. And then he fought us again. And that was it. Do I think Cuckoo Lane was well done in Fate Samurai Remnant? Not really. But I don't think he was done terrible. I think he was fine. Fine. I'll give it a B rank. I'll give put him in B rank because I did like his little interaction he'd had with Gilgamesh. And I wish there were more stuff like that. Just servants interacting with one another. Next one, we have Oshi Gozen. I actually did like Ryder. I, I liked Ryder's inclusion. Actually, it was good. The arc with Ryder was probably the best part of Fate Samurai. It was the one that I felt was more engaging. It made the most sense. I want to say Ryder is an A. As a name. Well done. Their arc was good. Apparently, Yushi goes and can tank Saber's NP sometimes. Not always. Sometimes she can tank it, sometimes she can't. We don't know why. <laughs> Zhang. I think Zhang was actually pretty fun. I liked Zhang. I think most of the masters are pretty good. We understood what his goal was. Uh, we understood what his values were. We understood that he was a lot more scarier than he revealed himself to be. And so when there was that twist where he uh, joins with Caster, it made perfect sense. Zhang was a good both companion and uh, villain. I think he was fine. I didn't really like the conclusion and uh, the, the fact that he'd like, there was no punishment and the reason why there was a consequence to it is because Zhang is an historical character and he still has stuff to do in China. They couldn't kill him off but whatever I can forgive it because Zhang is awesome. I like Zhang. Rogue Saber. One of the few rogue servants that actually was very well developed. By far my favorite rogue servant of them all. I would say yes. I love his design. I love Rogue Saber. One of the most badass characters in the story. Rogue Assassin. Li Xuan. A I did not like Li Xuan's inclusion in the story because it didn't really do anything. He was an obstacle twice, and that's it. His side, I will give that his last side quest was fine, but the problem with it is that we don't really get an explanation. It's just a, well, she asked for help and I agreed. So now I'm helping. We don't know why he's helping. Did he lose to Ryder? Did he just like Yoi? We don't know any of that. Uh, and we're never gonna know because uh, the story doesn't explain anything. So I'm gonna give uh, a, a rogue assassin a D. Wasn't used at all. If you remove Li Xuan from the story, the story continues to be the same. Nothing changes. Cersei. I actually, I really liked Cersei. P the pig scene was fun. Uh, the pig, the pig was very fun. I did enjoy it. Uh, I'll give it an A rank. Cersei is just an observer. Yes, she does participate in the story a little bit. Very minimal role. But for the most part, she's just in the sidelines. You do side quests and side quests are fun. But ultimately, she just doesn't do anything in the story. She's just in the sidelines. I would have probably put her in the EX if we had gotten a scene with her and Kaimon. She comments how she saw Kaimon and how she gave a bunch of stuff to Kaimon, and I would have loved to see her interacting with Kaimon, considering Kaimon's personality. I would have loved to see that. But of course, they couldn't do that because giving character development is too is too difficult. Tamamaria, I'll be honest, C rank, I don't think Tamamaria was done that well. She had no influence in the story. She was just a side character and her side quest didn't really tell you anything about her personality, aside from just that she's a Tabamo and, and she wants to bang y Yori. That's basically it. That's what I got from it. Should have had a more impact in the story. It is ludicrous, ludicrous, that she gets mind control and after the mind control event happens and she's no longer being mind controlled, next time you talk with her, there is no mention about her being mind controlled. That is ludicrous to me, but you can't do that because that's not part of her side quest, where, which is about making a dish. Boring, they don't really use her to do anything. There's very little interactions, mundane, boring, and tedious. And what could have been done, wasn't done for reasons unknown to me. Yuri! Oh my God, do I wanna, do I wanna start this? Worse than Sieg. That is what Yuri is. He is worse than C. By far the worst part about Fate Samurai Remnant, it is the main character. 
Yuri. And it's not Yuri's fault, which is the weirdest part. I think Yuri is a perfectly fine character. In fact, I like Yuri. What I don't like is getting constantly shoved down my throat that Yuri is something that he is not. This scene... This Yuri and this Yuri are the same. So Yuri here is getting embarrassed and is finding this Portridge delicious. He wants to learn how to cut down Cersei. That is what the story is trying to tell me. Bullshit. And that is why I think Yuri is by far the worst main character of every Fate series. Holy shit, that is his bad character development. This is just one scene out of a hundred scenes that are like this where Yuri behaves like this. He's just a yes man, and he's always complimenting people. He is not this mind, bloodthirsty demon that just wants to cut down people. That's not who he is. If I remove all of this bullshit darkness ending, plus all the bullshit Yuri is evil nonsense that this story tries to shove it down my throat, Yori is actually a pretty good character. The writer wanted to do something with Yori, and it didn't work. Because the writer doesn't know how to do it, and the writer also doesn't understand the characters around them. And that's another thing that kind of pisses me off about the story and regarding to Yori. Why is it that suddenly every single servant is suddenly a psychologist and can just look at a character and be like, Oh, I, I know what is inside you. I can tell just by looking at your eyes that you are this type of person. Since, since when can servants... Why, why is suddenly every servant like this? Why is it suddenly every character can just look at Yuri and be like, Oh yeah, I, I know what's going in your, inside your mind. I can just look at you. Like, and don't get me wrong, I can understand like someone like Cuckoo Lane fighting Yuri and being like, Oh yeah, like, you're not, you're not exactly like a, a Celtic, but you're not too bad. You know, basically saying that, you know, Yuri is someone that likes to fight, which is fine. I think that's fine. I can also understand Kaimon, someone who's been through hell, looking at being able to recognize him, essentially himself in Yuri. I can understand that. What I can't understand is why is every other servant also doing the same? And it's annoying because every time in the st every fucking minute of the game is just someone reminding you and how Yuri is someone he's not. It would be like if Fate Stay Night had Shiro acting like a normal guy, and instead of being dumb and throwing himself in front of servants and all that, instead of him being the one acting and doing the suicidal stuff, instead it's just him being a normal guy and everyone else around him telling him to his face, oh, I know, I can look at your eyes and and tell that you're uh, you're suicidal, that you don't care about your life. I I can tell just from looking at your eyes, Shiro. You're 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 a selfless person. I can tell. I I'm looking at your eyes right now, and I can tell that you're selfless. Don't you know that's how it works? I could see it in your eyes. That's what it was. That's what this Yuri dumb archetype was. It's just. I can look at your eyes, Yuri. You're not who you portray yourself to be. Okay. It, it's just. Annoying. Remove all of that bullshit, Yuri is actually a pretty good character. I would probably put him in A rank. So I cannot wait for him to get put in FGO where they're where they're actually gonna write him well. Oh man, I needed to get that out of the system because oh my god, that was horrible. Moving on to Kaya. Kaya. I I mean Kaya's just a side character, but to be honest, I, I liked Kaya. It was fine. If I were to like put Kaya or around next to Arya, I would choose Kaya. So Kaya is is B rank. I would say Kaya is B rank. She's a fun side character. She's kinda like the tiger the story, in that she's not really relevant. But she's kind of there the, being the emotional support. And that's fine. I like Kaya. The book. Um, I don't really get why the book exists. We didn't really get anything about the book. No background about the book. I don't know why the book knows Jun. Apparently the book knows Jun. I have no reason to know why he knows Jun. Maybe he is French. Who knows? And also the info dumper. Mostly the info dumper. Actually, yeah, that's his role. That's the role of the book. The book is the info dumper. Whenever something is happening and nobody knows what's happening, the book shows up and explains you exactly what is happening. That's the role of the book. Yeah, a D rank. I don't know why the book exists. Uh, other than just the fact that they needed an info dumper. Moving on to Kaimon. I actually liked Kaimon. I think that a lot of the scenes, Game Plus, 
helped a lot in me liking Kaimon. I mean, I get a little bit. I've, I've read a little bit already. I've kind of been doing some research, and I kind of read a little bit. I kind of get it now that he's trying to save his family that is in hell um, by bringing them to Earth, which is hell. It's a weird one, but at the same time, like, Kaimon is not supposed to be an intellectual. Kaimon is not supposed to be a smart guy. Kaimon is very clearly, he is a wild beast that is just very angry with the world. Um, or as one of my chats has said, uh, he is a crybaby, and I kind of agree. But I like the crybaby, so I'm gonna give him an A rank. I think Kaimon was done well. In fact, I, I'd say I liked Kaimon. I found Kaimon to be more fun than Zeng. Yoi! I liked Yoi, but I didn't like how little sh she was used. I was hoping for more. She just dies, and that's it. <laughs> the end. <laughs> if she ever gets included in FGO, I am gonna roll for her, because I really liked her. I, I like her design, I like her voice acting. So I'm gonna give her a B rank. I don't think she deserves the A rank, because I don't think enough was done with her. But she st I still liked her. Still fun. B rank. High B rank. Almost A rank. Master that didn't matter. I am really disappointed with this. I really thought that the other route, the uh, caster route, would be about this guy. The guy dies anyway. So I'm gonna give him a D. Because he's irrelevant. Moving on with the next one, Dorothea. I really like Dorothea. I felt horrible abandoning her the first time. Put her in A. I find her hair starts to be funny. I don't like her hat, but overall, I like Dorothea. Uh, she kind of reminds me a little bit of um, of Aluvia in terms of personality. Uh, very, uh, very confident, but not condescending, but also uh, kind-hearted and all that. I, I liked her. It's kind of a shame you didn't really get that much. I thought we would get more of her in her in the the assassin in the castle route because you save her you got like the ship throwing cannonballs at the bowl scene and then you got the end scene with her and zang and that was about it um so very disappointed in the amount of scenes we got for her but you know it's fine i, I liked her and i hope we get to see her more in the future saber i didn't like saber at the beginning of the story. It really took me a while, but I can say with confidence that I think that Saber is by far the saving grace of the story. Saber wasn't there. Yuri would be even more unbearable. I like Saber. I really like Saber. I like that Saber actually went through development, unlike every other character. Dayu, I think. Yeah, it's Dayu. I like Dai. I think Dayu is the best, <laughs> the best master in the war, the most fun. But more importantly, I love how, like, the story actually did really well her character. Like, I was second guessing uh, a few times whether she was going to betray us or not, because the story was portraying her really well as being a great character. She has her objectives. She is willing to work with, you know, garbage to get to that those objectives. But at the same time, she has her ideals and she's not willing to break those ideals. I love her. Very amazing character. I did not expect to like her personality as much as I ended up liking it uh, in the end. My only grievances is that the story doesn't have an epilogue where I get to see what happens to her what happens to, and essentially what happens to everyone else. I feel like we needed an epilogue where we get to see every character that is remaining and we get to see what they're doing. Because I would have loved to see what, what happened to Dayu after the war. Arjuna! I'm gonna give Arjuna a D. With Arjuna, there's only two side quests and they're all just combat. I don't think Arjuna was utilized at all, so... He gets the D rank. Assassin. Assassin's a weird one because I kind of like Assassin, but I don't feel like they utilize Assassin that well. I'm going to give Assassin a, a C rank for one reason, and that is I still don't understand why he betrayed Dorothea. And we never get an explanation. We get hints that he's going to betray her, but we don't get an understanding as to why. I think that that's just bad writing uh, for the character. So I'm going to put it in my C because I still found him to be an interesting character. Like, that there, like there was clearly something there that they were trying to allude to. But the fact that there was, they never explored it and just left it up to interpretation is my issue. So I'm going to give him a C rank. Uh, Giovanni, I'm going to be honest. I think Giovanni is a B rank. 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. I think Giovanni is better than all of these. <laughs> Musashi! Uh, I mean, it's just Musashi. Musashi is Musashi. If you wanted Musashi, you got Musashi. If you were expecting Musashi, you did indeed get Musashi. Uh, there's really not to say. Uh, what you know of Musashi and FGO, you got the same in Fate Samurai Remnant. EX rank, that's all I have to say. Caster. Caster is a weird one because aside from one root, you don't really get to see Caster. Uh, that said, you kind of get a little bit of what his objectives are in that route at least unlike some other a, a lot of other characters in the story i'm gonna give caster a b rank i think he was fine he wasn't like an amazing villain i think kaimon in terms of being a villain did a better job but caster was still fine i didn't enjoy the dragon though i thought i thought the dragon was just you know boring it should have just ended with us killing a caster next one the archer i'm gonna be honest this is probably the character i found to be the most just whatever. I don't know what to say about this archer. I don't dislike Archer, but I also don't like him. I'm indifferent to Archer. Whereas with Saber and Yori, there was a chemistry there. Zang and Archer, on the other hand, they were kind of on the same line from the start. That results in a very boring dynamic because there's no dynamic. They're just following the same path and behaving just about the same. I don't really have much to say about Archer. I liked his fight with Berserker, with Rogue Berserker. I thought it was the best scene of the entire uh, story. But other than that, I didn't really care that much about Archer. I wasn't sad when he died. I was just like, whatever. Uh, so I'm gonna give him a C rank. I don't even know how you would fix it. The problem is more that the pairing just doesn't lead to fun and engaging interaction. And you just had this very bland and boring um, relationship between Zhang and Archer. Going for Gilgamesh. I love Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh is my favorite character, not just of fate, but in all of fiction. I love Gilgamesh a lot. Do I think Gilgamesh was well utilized in this story? I actually don't think he was well utilized in the story. My biggest problem with Gilgamesh is that aside from the main character, Noah the Master seems to acknowledge that Gilgamesh exists. And that to me is an issue, but it's not just Gilgamesh. A lot of the other masters seem to just ignore a lot of other servants. Gilgamesh is just one of them, but what I like about Gilgamesh the most is seeing him interact with other servants. There was one side quest of Gilgamesh that I liked, and that was when we went to Zhang's place and we saw Zhang and Asher interact with Gilgamesh. That's what we needed more about Gilgamesh. And if we had more about that, where it's just Gilgamesh going around and just kind of observing other characters and kind of judging them. That would have been fun. I mean, he's the ruler. He's the ruler cast. That's what he should have been doing. He should have been, you know, interacting with the characters and like judging them and, you know, so that we can get some exploration and seeing what they're like. But we didn't get any of that. He's just kind of in his own corner. And I can tell that Gilgamesh is just a fan service character. He's not really there for anything else than fan service. You know what? I like fan service. So I'm going to give him an A. If, if he had any relevance to the story, I would put him in EX. But I can't put him in EX because if you remove Gilgamesh from the story, I don't feel like the story changes that much. I feel like it follows the exact same story, pl uh, same plot. Uh, this caster uh, that is irrelevant and that they were building to be very crucial and the key to the grail uh, that ended up actually not mattering in the end. Uh, I have to say, I don't get it. I don't get what this character is and I don't get what the character is here. Uh, I don't understand. So in Kaimon's route, uh, she is used as a key and I understand it there. She's... As I, the moment I saw her, I was like, oh, is this the the Elia of the story? Is this the Grail of the story? Because that's that that dress feels very Heaven's Feels. That that was actually my reaction. But, but then we go to the other roots, and suddenly there's no more key needed. In the darkness, I can kind of understand because um, Yuri didn't want to use the Grail, so she, he wouldn't need the key. But, but Caster used the Grail. He would need the key. But apparently now she's not relevant anymore. I don't understand this character and I don't understand why this character is in the story. But perhaps even more annoying than that is the fact that the story keeps telling me that she's the 15 servant when she's not. She's the 16. I can count. There are 16 servants in this story and for some reason the story treats her as the 15 when she's not. And I don't get it. And that toppled in with the fact that she's actually not relevant and she has 
Dude, I don't know. I feel like there was maybe a route where we, she, she would have been very relevant and we would have been able to explore the story around her and it was just cut off and I don't know what to say. Like, it, I, Yuri doesn't even know she exists. That's, that's, that, that's the most insane part. In all of the routes, Yuri doesn't even know she exists. How is this possible? I don't get why this character exists. I'm gonna put it in C. My problem is, is disappointment. I felt like the story was building a lot towards this character. And at the end of the day, at the end of the story, we got nothing. We got a whole bunch of nothing. Even when Kaimon took Kaya, I expected her to be transformed to become a key. No, uh, they just used Kaya. It's strange, like I don't get it. Moving on to Jun. Oh, one. I've already seen a lot of people call, uh, talk about Jun and how she's essentially just a wall. I kind of have to agree that she is kind of a wall and it's kind of sad that we didn't really get to see Jun. But I disagree that she was kind of a wall. New Game Plus. I just think New Game Plus with the scenes with Jun and, and Kaimon did add a little bit. But I do agree that ultimately when I really think about everything about the story, all of the different routes, I do have to agree that Jun really does feel like a downgrade. But I mean like downgraded as in Jun is a very good character that could have actually had a very good chemistry with Kaimon. Like, could you imagine having an actual, like, Jun constantly trying to get Kaimon to go in the right direction? That would have been a much more interesting and dynamic interaction. Yes, it would have been chaotic. Kaimon would have been pissed for at least, even more pissed than he already is. But it at least would have been something. Instead of just... Jun just saying understood all the time. And I feel like that's my problem. It's like Jun was just very passive and kind of a wall. Now she did have moments. I do think that the little moment where Jun is, if you believe God doesn't love you, then I will love you. I think that's a very powerful thing. Um, the, no, there wasn't, it wasn't romantic. It was more the, uh, as Kaimon pointed out, it's the uh, religious fanatics. And I liked it, those little bits. We needed more of that. And we didn't get it, and that's kind of why I was disappointed. Also, I didn't really like how Jun died in the Kaimon route. The way she gets offed in that route is, quite frankly, just underwhelming. Um, in the other routes, it's fine. It's understandable. Uh, actually, it's not understandable. She gets RNG'd by a lightning bolt. Never mind. In all of the routes, the way she dies is just... Uh, kind of a WTF moment. I think the the writer didn't really know what to do with Jun. Maybe they thought Jun was too complex to write, so they couldn't do it. Um, that's not me saying that Jun is complex. I actually think Jun is a very simple character to write, um, but apparently the writer didn't agree because they completely fucked up her personality. Samson, I really like Samson. I did not expect to like Samson this much. I loved Sansom. Sansom was one of my favorite servants. Legitimate. I think Sansom is my favorite servant. So I have an issue with FGO when it comes to Berserkers. I hate how most of FGO's Berserkers can talk. Like Musashi. Like Musashi in this story. But that's probably my grievance. I don't feel like Musashi should have been a Berserker. I really don't like how Berserkers can talk in FGO. Sansom is kind of a return to the formula where you have a berserker that can't speak, but you can really tell their personality. And that and that and that is that's really fun. I really love Sansom. I hate what they did to him. I hate how they killed him off. I think the way they kill them off is ridiculous. I understand the narrative that they were going for, but I really hate that they kill them off and it makes no sense to me. This guy, this is the brother of the, of the big schemer. Uh, surprisingly, I actually think he's fine. I like the brother. Uh, it was small interact. Okay, maybe B is pushing it. Let's see, let's put him like here. Yeah, let's put him like there. Uh, I actually thought the brother of the schemer was fine. Uh, Sasaki Kojiro, I hate that he's in the story. I hate that he's in the story. I, I, I don't feel like Sasaki Kojiro should have been in the story. I hate that they added him in just to give uh, Mr. Yori here a Tsunami Gaish. There you go. That is, uh, that is my tier list. As you can tell, it's all over the place. And most importantly, there's a, there's a lot of side characters that are better than a lot of the rogue uh, servants. One, two, three.
Four, oh, wait. No, not four yet. Four, five. Uh, 